What is up my score buddies, Flashfire here and today we're going to build our first team with Cinderace. One of the quickest ways to get into competitive battling after a new game releases is to take a team and build it with your starter. Fortunately, in this generation the starter Pokemon all have pretty good competitive options. So we're going to be building a team with Cinderace today. Now before we get into this, just a quick reminder to drop me a follow down on Twitch, link in the description. Uh, because I stream on there every Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, and that's the best way to catch Wi-Fi battles, showdown lives, and get a chance to battle me. Okay, so getting into this here, we are going to start off, of course, with Cinderace. This guy is actually really, really strong. He has an attack stat of 116 and a speed stat of 119, which are both the standout qualities of this guy, and he actually hits like a truck. One of the coolest parts of his kit is his new ability, Liberio? Liberio? Libero? I don't know. I don't know how you say it. Anyway, it's basically the same as Protean on that Greninja had in uh, X and Y. Changes the Pokemon's type to the type of move it's about to use, which is huge because it means that every single move that he uses has the same type attack boost, which boosts its power by 50%, which is a big deal. It also means that you can change your type ahead of your opponent hitting you to potentially resist a hit that you wouldn't have normally. So while I think you probably could make an argument for running a choice band on this guy, I really think putting a life orb on him is going to be the best option because he has a couple of slightly situational moves and it just stops you from choice locking yourself into something like sucker punch which would be really bad now as i said this guy has a good amount of coverage as a physical attacker he's essentially just physical greninja which is really cool the downside being of course he is mono fire type so he will be weak to stealth rocks on the switch in so you're gonna have to control hazards quite well throughout your game if you want to be switching him in and out especially if we're going to be running life orb and he's going to be chipping away at his health anyway for the move set here this guy gets a brand new move called pyro ball and honestly this thing outside of anything else is one of the coolest animations in the game i mean just look look at this outside of looking cool as hell though it is a 120 base power physical fire move with a 10% burn chance. It does have 90% accuracy, so that would be the trade-off against running Flare Blitz, which is the same base power, but hits 33% recoil. So I really think Pyro Ball is better than Flare Blitz. Obviously, there's going to be that small window where you're going to miss attacks, but 90% of the time, this is going to be way better than Flare Blitz. There's no downside to it, really. Then the next move we're going to be going for, I think it's really cool to have priority on this guy. We're going to be running Sucker Punch here. This is a 70 base power dark move, obviously with that same type of attack bonus from the Libero effect it's going to be going up to a 105 base power priority move which you can't really argue with to be honest we're going to be running a life orb on here so it's going to be hitting like an absolute truck now something else that i really like about this guy and all of the starters this generation is that he can run u-turn as we're going to be getting the stab boost we're fully attack invested and we've got a life orb this is actually going to hit really really hard as well as just being a fantastic move for gaining momentum against your enemy team this gives us good coverage against psychic and dark types and just generally gives us a lot of leeway in predicting opponent's switches and moves. The final move slot we're going to be filling out here with Zen Headbutt. This is going to be very important for breaking through one of those problematic Pokemon that I think it's going to be, and that is Toxapex. A Life Orb Zen Headbutt should... I'm not sure if it'll one hit, but it'll definitely two hit. Uh, so that's just fantastic, really, isn't it? Now, I really think this guy's going to get a pretty bad case of the four move syndrome there are some really good moves here that you want to run but you might not be able to because obviously you've only got four moves total some notable things that i've missed out here he gets access to gunk shot iron head and high jump kick which are all really really powerful moves of course uh, then we also get things like sub and bulk up which you could potentially use but i think it's going to be better just to get him in and get some big hits off and then the final honorable mention here is going to be quick attack now i know it's still only a 40 base power move but it's priority that is not conditional like sucker punch is and you will still be getting that stab boost so it's not the worst thing ever obviously you don't get any super effective coverage with it but it could be useful it wouldn't be the worst thing to run okay so with this move spread we actually hit everything in the game for at least neutral damage 
We usually hit for super effective damage. I believe we hit super effectively against 10 types and we hit neutrally against eight. So that's pretty good. And we're going to be pairing him with another physical wall breaker. And with that guy in, we should have pretty much super effective coverage against every type in the game, which is pretty damn good. Last but not least, the final part of this guy's set, we're going to be looking at the EVs. I'm going to go for a pretty standard EV spread here. We've just got max attack, max speed, and then a jolly nature here. The reason we've gone for jolly is so that we can speed tie with other Cinderace and also get outspeed things like modest Inteleons. Basically anything with base 120 speed, we will outspeed if they're running modest or just generally not max speed. So pairing this guy with a really strong wall breaker, some Pokemon that can set hazards and potentially some slow Volt Switch and U-Turn users is what's going to make this guy shine. You want to be, be able to bring him in basically on a free switch and just be able to get off hits and threaten enemy Pokemon. That's that's the plan for this guy. We want him to just be able to smack stuff and not worry too much about tanking hits. Basically, he's going to be a really strong revenge killer and wall breaker, as Greninja was in previous generations. Talking about switching in a lot, he is going to need to be able to tank Stealth Rocks as best he can. He does have that base fire typing, which is a little bit unfortunate, which is why our four extra EVs at the end here have gone into special defense rather than HP. If you keep your HP at an odd number, you get one extra switch into Stealth Rocks. So this normal if you have an even number of HP, the way that Stealth Rocks damage works, the fourth time you switch this guy in, he'll just die and you won't get to do anything. But with an odd number of HP, he'll live on one. So as I said, it's going to be important to pair this guy with something that can cover super effective hits on the types that we're missing. What I'm going to go for here is a Mamoswine. I think this guy is going to be huge in the Sword and Shield meta. He has such great coverage, a decent speed tier, and a really high attack stat. So I think he's going to be a big, big threat just going forward in general. This guy is going to be our Stealth Rock user, so we're missing out on some offensive power there, but with his dual stab coverage, he basically hits everything that Cinderace misses. So we're going to be running Ice Shard, Icicle Crash, Earthquake, and Stealth Rock on this guy. With this set, the only super effective coverage we're missing between those two guys is going to be against Water, Fighting, and Normal. So that's pretty strong, and the rest of the Mons on the team are also going to have super effective coverage against other stuff, so we should be able to cover that pretty nicely. We're going to be able to set the rocks here, and on this guy, I'm going to be running a Sash. I feel like this is the best option here. I was originally considering either scarfing or banding him, but I really value the ability to set the rocks. I know you could potentially run a choice item on a rocks user, but I don't really like it. So I'm going to be going for the sash here and then we'll, we'll just go for the thick fat ability here just because it gives us a little bit of extra survivability and the other two abilities don't really do anything. So, so the next offensive part of our team and probably our Gigantamax user is going to be a Tox Tricity, which I think is a really cool one. I had, this typing is unique to this guy. He's Poison Electric type, which is really cool because, as I said, we are missing coverage currently against Water and Fairy types, so those two types of coverage are going to be really helpful. His ability, Punk Rock, boosts the power of sound-based moves, so we're going to be running some of those. This guy is going to be a Scarf user as well. He has that base 75 speed naturally. If you run him as max speed, you can run a Modest Nature here and still outspeed everything up to base 120, so that's things like Inteleon and other score buddies, score buddies, and other Cinderace. So I don't feel the need to run a Timid Nature here, it would be to speed tie with other like Scarf users and speed boosters and stuff, and I'm not really about that, I just want to bring this guy in and be able to revenge, revenge kill stuff. So as I said, his Punk Rock ability gives him boosted power on sound based moves so we're of course going to be running boom burst on this guy the 140 base power normally and then it's just going to get buffed even higher is just going to absolutely tear through stuff it is normal type so it only gets neutral coverage against most things but that's okay you know the next move we're going to be going for i believe this is unique to toxicity is going to be overdrive it's a sound based electric type special move it's base 80 power naturally so it'll be boosted past the power of thunderbolt which is going to be really good for electric type coverage we're also going to stick volt switch on here again getting those two other physical attackers in for free is going to be a big deal so running u-turn and vault switch users that can let that happen and ease predictions is going to help immensely and the final move we're going to be going for sludge wave as a coverage this will let us hit fairy types and grass types and all that kind of stuff and have a great time as i've mentioned already we're not going to be running a timid nature on this guy we will just be going for max attack max speed and the modest nature as this is just going to allow us to hit as hard as humanly possible and that's what we want really isn't it as i've mentioned as well this guy 
can be our Gmax user. He gets access to Gmax Stun Shock, which is a 140 base power special electric type move, and it is guaranteed to either poison or paralyze the target, which is pretty darn spicy. Something to note with this guy is that he is four times weak to ground, which is a little bit awkward. As well as that, he will very, very much struggle against ground types. Something that comes to mind here immediately is Excadrill. This, that thing will completely wall off this guy because he's immune to both his stabs and resists the boom burst, which is a little bit awkward. I mean, unless it's bulky Excadrill, it still won't want to switch into a boom burst. I'd imagine it'll still do a good amount of damage, but that is something to bear in mind and it's something that we've had to consider when building the rest of the team things like excadrill completely wall off toxicity and we'll just get free switches into it all day long which is definitely something you're going to have to watch out for so the next guy we're going to be running as i mentioned already we are going to need some strong hazards removal uh, i would also help immensely to have a ground immunity on this team as well as some water typing so you know we've got to reach for that washing machine we're bringing out the rose and w here we're going to be running a very standard move set on this guy we're just going to be hitting the vault switch hydro pump pain split and then we'll be putting the defog on this guy we want to be able to keep hazards off the field as much as possible our two big physical attackers are going to be weak to rocks so we want to mitigate that as much as possible just gone for leftovers on this guy we want him to be a bit tanky and then we've gone for a specially defensive set with a calm nature another thing to note this guy is a slow vault switch user so we are going to be able to bring in our fit our physical wall breakers very happily off of predicted switches with this guy now the other half of this defensive pairing here is going to be our corviknight now this guy actually doesn't have as diverse a move pool as i was hoping he has the same typing as skarmory but that does not mean he has as much utility unfortunately we're going to be running this guy with leftovers and pressure his other abilities are a little bit underwhelming i don't see a lot of moves or abilities that want to lower other pokemon stats so mirror armor isn't that great pressure is definitely going to be the one here so in terms of moves i've gone for roost we need that recovery we've also got taunt just to stop other people from setting up u-turn for another slow u-turn user which is a big deal as i've said and then we're just going to be putting brave bird on here just for that little bit of offensive threat basically it's only attacking move that's worth running finally this guy is going to be our defensive wall here so we're just going to slap some hp and defense evs and impish nature and call it a day something to note here if toxicity's g max form isn't doing it for you in a specific battle this guy can also g max and his g max move removes the effects of reflect and light screen as well as being a 130 140 base power flying type move so that's pretty cool okay so in this final move slot we kind of just need to balance out the typings in this team a little bit what we're going to be doing is running a Gudra in here. This guy is a big fat boy. He gives us a grass immunity, fire resistance, and a couple of other things that are going to be really, really good for this team. We just kind of wanted a little bit of extra bulk, something else to pivot off and check things, and I think this guy can have a mad amount of coverage that will be really helpful for the team. We're going to be running Thunderbolt, which allows us to hit pesky water types like that. Toxapex, Fire Blast to blast through ferrothorn and other grass types which are quite prevalent in this generation then we're just gonna slap a draco meteor on there to power through neutral and super effective hits and then a dragon tail to phase people through our hazards deal with people who are potentially set up and just generally be a nuisance i've gone for an assault vested set here and uh, we will just be maxing out HP and special defense in order to tank hits as much as possible. Okay, there you go. That is the team for our Cinderace. This is going to be one of the teams that we're bringing into the Battle Stadium and the Showdown ladder very soon on stream. So like I said, remember to drop a follow down there. As well as that, tell me what you think of this team. Tell me how you think I can improve it down in the comments. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.